morning all ASFN viewers. This morning we are very very privileged to be able to fish a spot that I've been wanting to fish for the last 17 years staying in Cape Town. So today I am fishing at the port of Cape Town and it's a port of Cape Town open day for you guys. So today we're going to be fishing at the port of Cape Town like you can see beautiful Cape Town table mountain in the background beautiful skies winter day awesome day for fishing so today we're going to be targeting cape bream or as the locals will call it a hottie and guys for any future fishing events updates videos please like and subscribe to this youtube channel so guys so the trace will be that we're going to use today will be for targeting Rotis or Cape Bream. I've spoken to some of the guys that fished here the last time and we're looking at fishing in 13 meters of water so we're going to make a quite a long trace to lift the bait or to get the bait lifted quite high off the ground. So guys what we have here is 50 centimeters plus minus of the sinker line 0.50 maxima and that's going between two swivels another 40 50 centimeters between two three-way swivels and then for the hook line we're going to use the fluorocarbon 0.45 as stated in one of the previous videos that i did is everybody has got their own idea what works for them and what doesn't work for them some guys use snell knots other guys use figure of eight knots other guys use normal clinch knots when they tie hooks and things for myself even if i fish with j-hooks and the only other time i will be fishing with j-hooks is when i struggle to get um, elf or shad when they bite very um, short or we call it short then i like a j-hook where they don't swallow the bait so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take the j-hook but i'm still going to snell the j-hook and then it sort of works like a half circle hook so so snelling the knot even with a with a j-hook i found i get m much more um, um, hook sets and better hook sets and especially in the corner of the mouth as well like i said this is my personal preference each guy for himself and i'm a big believer in try listen to what everybody's uh, saying using and make that decision for yourself what you think will work best for yourself and trial and error and adapt till you find what works for you so that's the hook and the whole point of any type of circle hook and it works with a j hook as well if the fish starts swimming away with the bait the hook goes straight and catches it in the mouth you'll see every time there's an open mouth fish swims away and it catches the every time so that's why i liked using a snell knot on all my hooks so now we just tie this onto the swivel with a normal figure of eight knot that side and then we're going to make one more so and then the same with the second trace hook trace a snell knot the snell knot that i like making is the one where you make a figure of eight on the shank of the hook if i'm fishing for holyun or bigger fish i'll make a triple um, figure of eight but fishing for these cape bream i'm only going to use a single figure of eight and then before we tie the hook onto the line we're going to take one of these floaties put it into onto the sinker trace and then so guys one of the anglers said to me yellow works best here but we're going to try and see if there's any specific color that they like and then later on we can always change to only use that color if we found the preferred color for the day so normal figure of eight on the other side 
and then the same with the second hook trace. Just a quick recap. The sinker line tied to a freeway swivel with one uh, uh, number one hook or in this case the Lynx number six hook 50 centimeter higher another um, freeway swivel with another 1-0 link links okay guys so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, start with two baits the first bait uh, salted white mussel and the second bait a piece of sardine I'm just going to use small sardine fillet remember always have a sharp knife otherwise you're going to cut yourself then all I'm going to do is make a couple of slivers in the bait so that I can shape the bait better fold it over I use the Cotton Pro thin line uh, bait elastic I make about 60% of the bait up before I actually put in the hook and then I will add the hook to make it nice and proud so guys when you make up a bait what is quite important <laughs> is that the book hook must be able to sit proud it mustn't be able to fall over if it falls over you're not going to get that great hook set oh, line is in the way. Which way was I? so to make sure that the hook doesn't fall over what I'll do is I'll take it a couple of times around the hook a couple of times around the hook and then also a couple of times around the shank of the hook <laughs> and there's the first bait a nice sardine bait for a hottie and then the second bait we're going to use half a white mussel once again what I like to do is to shape the bait with the cotton And then I'm going to insert the hook and then tie the white muscle on, same as with the sardine, a couple of times around the point of the hook, moving up to the eye of the hook, a couple of times around there, and there you've got nice proud hooked white muscle so guys and then i'm using a 3-0 sinker for to fish here the setup i'm going to be using today this is a sensation 12 foot rod three to five ounce and custom built by craig neil and then the reel I'm going to use is a Daiwa Saltis 4000 reel. And then I'm using Surf Pro braid and a leader of 0.12 Surf Pro. <laughs> and guys, the first Cape Reef. Fishing off a breakwater like this or in a harbour 
it's normally very deep water so you don't need to cast far the, all the structure is right next to the side so you'll see I just basically cast just past the kelp and let it sink because like I said earlier they're talking about 13 meters deep uh, right next to the side here Again the yellow float and this time on a piece of chocker. And this Cape Bream is fork length 28, total length 32. And a little baby. Another small Cape Bream. Another undersized hottie. Quite a few of these guys are around. Guys, Ben over here caught a nice size hottie of four clean, 35, and total length. 38.9. Well nice done. fish, Ben. Well fish. Charlie, Charlie, come and pose here with your fish. And she's got a nice one. Well Total length 31 and fork length 28. Hi, yeah. right, guys, I've now just borrowed a rod from one of the, my mates here, it's a Kuma Elite 10 feet and it is an Axela, Daiwa Axela reel and there is a nice Cape Bream. Ishmael, what's the size limit of these? So the size limit for Cape Bream is 22 um, centimeters. Okay, and, and your, your uh, bag limit is 10. Hi guys, I'm here with Ishmael Adams. He's going to show us his trace and his bait presentation. It was his rod that I just borrowed to catch that Cape Bream. Um, like I said, it's a Kuma blue 10 foot with a Daiwa Excellent reel. What braid have you got on here? It's 20 pound uh, J braid on there. 20 pound J braid and then same as I did earlier, uh, sinker trace of about 50 centimeters and then the hook trace with a yellow bead. Okay, Ishmael, over to you. Cool. So, um, the Bream here actually like quite a big presentation. Generally, I'll give it a split through the middle to make it a more slim size bait. Okay. Generally, Thread the bait through. Keep the bait nice and proud. Cotton. So small bit of bait presentation. More cotton above the hook. Keep it nice and firm. show us how to catch a fish on that bait. Okay. <laughs> Totaling uh, 32, just bang on 32. 
Nice fish, well done. Thank you. Guys, now I've tried Ishmael's bait. Let's see if it works. White muscles working. Another small one. I don't know if you guys can remember him from the DeWip trip a couple of years ago um, fishing here at the port of Cape Town fishing day but tell us how has your day been? Oh, it's been a good day so far um, this morning when we started off we got a couple of nice um, Cape Bream and uh, my daughter caught a nice big one um, but now as the tide starts to drop it's actually starting to slow down a bit but it seems like this corner has been firing a bit so we're going to try our luck on this side now Martin, tell us about the trace that you're using in a um, setup. Just fishing a little double hook trace, a little sardine at the, at the bottom. That's basically my chum. And then a tiny little daichi on top with a bit of choker. And then I'm actually fishing my bass setup. I just found it quite fun to fish the bass setup. It's nice and light. So having fun with the fish. Thanks, mate. Show us how. Here with Vikram Adams, and he just caught a very nice Cape Ream. Tell us what bait did you use? Muscle, white muscle. And was it a good fight? Yes. Good, nice, well done. I'm here with Winston, he just caught a nice Cape Ream. And apparently he's caught a couple of other nice Cape Bream and we're quickly going to measure them. Oh, that's a beauty. 37.5. the next one... Oh, even bigger. Is that on the point? Yeah. And 38.5. Well done. Two, well done. Well done, Winston. Thanks, man. Just a little 4,000 clash, big clash. A Kuda tournament and uh, it's a little four, uh, four, number four. Okay. And that's it. Okay. And, and how do you find that Takuma rod? I'm loving it. This is my Takuma tournament rod. Tournament, yeah. Huh? Okay. And well done, my boy. Yes, it's a keeper. Yes, You're taking it home. I hope you know how to clean a fish. Yeah. I think. Total length is 41. Hi guys. I'm now. We decided to take a break on fishing and chat quickly to the spokespeople for the port of Cape Town and ask them a couple of questions about this fishing day, this open day here in Cape Town. So guys, on my left I've got Ishmael and on my right I've got Benedict. They work for the Port of Cape Town. And guys, what is the purpose of this open day? Uh, thank you, uh, Neil, for the opportunity. So uh, the purpose of this open day is to actually open up the port to the port employees and their families, but also just the general public and to give uh, the employees and their kids an opportunity to learn about conservation around uh, uh, the port. We have one of the most sustainable fish in the port of Cape Town, which is the, the uh, Cape Bream. Uh, so, you know, it's just to remind even the, the seasoned anglers about conservation, bag limits, and making sure that we continue to practice sustainable fishing so that our kids can also enjoy this uh, sport in the years to come. Thank you. So Benedict, why is this day significant for the Port of Cape Town? Yeah, so uh, the Port uh, Open Fishing Day is also part of Transnet or TNPA's corporate social investment uh, responsibility uh, to try and give back uh, to the communities that are, are, are needy or that uh, you know are less uh, privileged. So we 
we try to have this fishing day quarterly. In the previous quarter that we had the fishing event, we did a stationary drive where we collected quite a bit of stationery. So the anglers, you don't have to pay to come in, you just have to do, uh, donate something like, uh, you know, any stationary, uh, stationary equipment and those are then uh, handed over to the needy schools. In this, uh, today's uh, drive that we're doing, it's actually because we now, uh, in the winter months, we want to get as much uh, blankets and old clothing that we can go and, and, and deliver to our homeless shelters. We have quite a big homeless community. In Cape Town around this time, we have quite a bit of rain, so I think, uh, you know, it would help and make a lot of people happy during this time. Oh, awesome. That's a great initiative, especially in this time with uh, the winter and the cold. And it's a win-win situa uh, uh, win situation for both parties. For the anglers, we're allowed to fish at the spot that we can't fish regularly. And for, for the homeless and those people to get them the blankets and the warm clothes that they need. Ishmael, how often are you guys going to hold this type of open day? So, um, the open day, like today, um, started in March um, uh, of this year where we tried it out with our new people within the limited space that we have and um, it was quite successful um, with this second one that we're having now and, and if you look at March to now we, we're looking at one quarter of the year so the focus is to have it uh, uh, or try and have one every quarter if we're successful with today's event so we have 200 people here today um, a very good turnout and we're thankful for all the, the, the donations that everybody has brought I think it's been a big success um, uh, and the results of today will inform us having uh, one every quarter going forward. Today. Please guys remember to subscribe to the YouTube ASFN channel or um, the social media post so we will post future events at um, the Port of Cape Town and guys just have a look at what the view from up here of Cape Town. Okay. Like I said this morning, one of my dreams moving down to Cape Town was always to be able to fish off these harbour walls. There was always stories of big king club, stockfish, um, egg, um, yellowtail, even rumours of yellowtail, um, snook coming off these walls. Why did you guys close the harbour walls for fishing? The port needed to become ISPS compliant in order to um, comply with international codes and uh, international best practice. Um, and just to add on what Ishmael was saying, so there's been an outcry from the community, like you've indicated as well, uh, Neil, uh, wanting to know why the port is no longer accessible for fishing. So through engagement with our port leadership, we still want to keep within the ISPS requirements and, and not, uh, uh, you know, lose uh, the compliance that we need to as a part of the international best practice. So we are doing it in a controlled manner with a limited number of people, uh, you know, so that we're still within the security requirements to, to make sure that we keep our rating as the Port of Cape Town. Once again, Ishmael, Benedict, thank you very much, not just from my side, but also from all the anglers taking part in this open day. It's a great initiative, especially with the, um, the blankets and the stuff going to the homeless people, but also just being able to enjoy a wonderful day here in Cape Town. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Another small one. Hey guys, here's my last fish. A little bit better size hotty. Day has gone quite well today. Water uh, weather's turned a bit bad. Uh, if the cameraman could just show us what Table Mountain used to look like. <laughs> Okay everybody, that's a wrap for this fishing day at the port of Cape Town. Typical Cape Town weather started off as a beautiful winter's morning and if the cameraman can show the same view of Table Mountain covered with clouds and 
storm busy coming in. And guys, remember, this was a privilege for us to be able to fish here. It's, there's a couple of these open days a year. I think there's four of them a year. And then please remember to like and subscribe to ASFN's YouTube channel.